In this video, we're going to be talking about the tool library and tool crib from inside of the Bobcam for Rhino. Now, the tool library is available at all times, and you can find that just right up here on the top bar, or you can right click on cam defaults. Now, the difference is when I right click on cam defaults, or if I use this box up above, we're not looking at the job that's actually started. So whether or not I have this milling job here, I can actually delete the whole thing. The tool library is the generic area where we have all of our tools inside the system. So I can right click on cam defaults and go down to tool library. When the tool library launches, this is where we're gonna see all the tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the drill here and we'll see we have drills, mills, lathe tools. So let me shrink that back up. We have lathe, we have generic. This is where we're gonna find different probes if you have a probe for your machine. We have settings for lasers, plasmas, and water jets. The main ones we're gonna be looking at during this video set is the drills, the mills, and the lathe tools. Because a wire EDM has a wire that we're going to use. And if you were gonna do a mill turn job, you're gonna be using either mill and lathe tools or just lathe tools. It's, it's a combination of all of them. So inside of our feature, I'll go to mill here. And then right here, we have all these supported tool types listed. So we have our end mill rough, end mill finish, chamfer mills, corner round tools, thread mills, single point thread mills, V tools, tapered tools, T cutters, dove mills, lollipops, and even a drag knife. And then a bunch of different barrel mills. So I'm just gonna keep it pretty generic and I'm just gonna make a new end mill. So I'll say end mill rough. And here is my entire list of end mills. Now you can go in and edit these end mills if you want. You could take one of the ones that already exists and you can modify it. And that is a big thing you may have to do because if we look over here, all these tools right now, unless they're inserted tools, so we will see some insert tools in here, all these tools show up as high speed steel. So I may need to go in and convert these to carbide. So let's start with making just a quick change to the tool. I'm going to go to my 3 8 flat end mill standard here, and I'm just going to double click on it. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up this tool parameter section right there where I can go in and either define the tool differently. So I could define the diameter, the flute length, the corner radius, the number of flutes, the overall length, the protrusion length, or how much of that tool is actually sticking out of the holder. Right down here, we have our tool number, and then right here is our material. So I could actually change this to carbide so that every time I pick this tool, it's gonna show up as a carbide tool, and Bobcat is going to generate feeds and speeds based on a carbide tool instead of high-speed steel. So this is all the same information that if we make a new tool, this is the things we're gonna have to define, which we're gonna go create our own little half-inch tool here in a minute. But down below that, we also have the holder that's available. So I can say assign a tool holder to this. And by default, we have CAT40, CAT50, and BT40 holders. So I'm going to go to a CAT40 holder. And then I can choose whichever holder I want or I can build my own. And my favorite one to look at when discussing kind of how these are built is this drill chuck. It's like a Jacob's chuck. I double click on it. It's the drill chuck for a cat 40. And so this is our cat 40, which is the actual holder part of it. And we can modify that if we need to. And then we have our holder itself. So you can see how we built this was just with cylinders and cones. So if you had your holder in your hand and you had a pair of calipers, you could measure the distance across. So you can measure the diameter there. And we'll see that it's 1.75. And then we could measure the height of it. So we can see that that's 0.5625. And you're just going to build this using cylinders and cones. If you have an area where it gets wider, you'll use a cone to taper to that size. So we can see the second cone here. We have a top diameter of 1.75, so the same as that cylinder there. And then the bottom diameter is 1.89, and we have that little cone to create it. And then we tell it the height. We just build it based on cylinders and cones until you have the full thing designed. It shouldn't take you too long. The main thing we're doing with these holders is really getting a good visualization in the simulation of if there's any sort of collisions that we have to worry about. So we can go in and pick or define a new holder. In my case, for this 3 8 tool, I'll just choose my 3 8 inch ID Arbor Cat 40 and then hit OK. Now that holder is gonna be attached to that tool every time I go to pick it. Now, 
if you're setting up feeds and speeds manually, if you're going to go in and type in feeds and speeds, you're going to enter in your spindle RPM, your cutting feed rate, and your plunge feed rate, then the tool material is really not that important. Neither is the material that's set up inside the system. You could have carbon steel set up, but if you're running it in aluminum and you're defining your feeds and speeds for aluminum, then the material doesn't really matter. But if you're going to let Bobcad figure out feeds and speeds, then you're going to want to make sure you have the right material selected as well as the right material inside the cam tree, which we'll look at in the next video. But if there's a specific tool you use, maybe an inserted face mill, where you always run the same feeds and speeds, you can also set up system feeds and speeds. So use system feeds and speeds allows me to enter in the spindle RPM, the plunge feed rate, and the cutting feed rate that I want to use every single time I select this tool. And every time I pick that tool, those are going to be the feed rates that come up regardless of what material is selected inside the cam tree. So if I have 1018 carbon steel and, and 4140 selected, they will have the same feed rates if this is defined and if this tool is chosen. We can also set up fully custom tool geometry. So you can actually assign tool geometry. You have to have it drawn out inside the CAD right here in a wireframe fashion. And you'll actually just draw it out and select it as a piece of geometry. So that's how we can modify tools to add tools to the system. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hit this green plus sign down at the bottom. And then it's going to take that tool and add it all the way down to the bottom of the list. So just scroll all the way down and there it is. So what I could do is I could double click on this tool and it opens it up. So I'm just going to call this my half inch diameter long, I'll say. And then right here, I could set up the diameter. I could set up my flute length, say it sticks out. I got an inch and a half worth of flutes. Uh, corner radius, it's a flat end mill, so I won't put anything there. But if you wanted a ball mill, you would just divide your radius by two. So for a ball mill, I'd put a 0.25 here. If you're going to do a bullnose end mill, you're just going to enter the size of the corner radius. So if you got a 60 thou radius tool, you just enter that there. We have our number of flutes, our overall length, our protrusion length, and then the tool number, which you can focus on tool numbers now and try and set them up. What I tell people is ignore these. Go through your job, do your whole job, and at the end of it, we have an ability to verify our tool assignment. So I'll verify it at the end, and then I can change all my tool numbers. Make sure to set up your tool material. If you want to attach a holder to it, make sure you attach your holder to it. And then again, custom feeds and speeds. That tool is now defined. So if I close this, just by clicking this little arrow over, we're going to see that there is that half-inch tool that I just created, all the information for it. Now, the big thing to remember is there's kind of two libraries for tools, or there's really two sections where you're going to have tools. One of them is this tool library here, so I can hit OK. The other is a tool crib. So the tool crib is after you've started your job. So if I right-click on CAM defaults and I say new job, I'll say milling, and then I'm just going to hit OK. Right here, we have our milling tools section. So if I right-click on that, I still have the ability to go into the tool library. But I also have this new tool crib. And if you're using Milturn, or really any of them, Milturn especially, though, this tool crib is very, very important. And the way that you could think about these two different things is the tool library is the shelf or the drawer somewhere in your shop that has every tool that you own. So it's going to be all your end mills, all your turning tools, whatever you got. This is going to be where you'll find them. But because I've now started a milling job, when I go into the tool library, I'm not going to have the options for my lathe. So all I'm going to have is my drills, my end mills, different types of end mills, and then my probing tools. All right, so it's going to get rid of all the options that I don't have. But again, these are all the tools that I own. And I don't want to have to sort through this list every time I want to start a job because I want to just have some tools ready. I want the tools that I plan on using in their own little spot. And so that's what the tool crib does. The tool crib is the area where we're going to take the tools either from that shelf or from that drawer, and we're going to bring them into the machine. This is the tools that are being used on the machine. So I could go here to say end mill rough, and I can add from the tool library, and then I have my full list of tools. So I could start this at the beginning of the job. I could set up and define all of the tools that I plan on using, and then the way I add them in is just by picking the end mill and hitting OK. And there is my half-inch end mill. 
I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of this list, and I'm going to pick in that half-inch end mill that I just created, and we can see it's got a holder on it as well. So right there, you can actually see the full tool with the holder and everything. So we can get a good definition of it. We can see exactly what it's going to look like. And then this is the tools that we plan on using throughout this job. These are the tools that I've gotten ready and I've loaded into the machine already. And that's how you want to think of the tool crib. These are the tools that we plan on using specifically for this job, while the tool library just has all the tools available to us. So you go from your tool library into your tool crib, just like you'd walk out to the shelf in your shop and grab the tool and load it into the machine. It's the same kind of thing. Again, it's really important to set up this tool crib if you're doing a mill turn job, but if you are doing a mill or a lathe job, it's not the most important thing in the world. You can actually create tools on the fly and you can pick tools right directly from the library and bring them right into a feature. So however you want to set it up is fine, but if you're doing a mill turn job, you will want to set up the tool crib before you start doing any tool path because you have to define the adapters that are on the part, the holders that are on the tool, and the tool itself. So you want to make sure everything is defined properly. And then when you're all done with this, if you plan on using this group of tools again, maybe you have 10 tools that you've set up and these are tools that you're going to use pretty often, you can actually save those features and then bring them back in later. Attached along with these videos, I have some example parts and some tool cribs that I've already set up that I'll be able to load in or import in when we create our next job. So when I'm all done, I can just hit OK, and that's my tool library and my tool crib from inside the Bobcam for Rhino.